Hey everyone, David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, but coming at you from SHOT Show 2023 at one of our favorite places, the Spyderco booth, with one of our favorite people, Eric. Hey David, nice to see you. How are you, my friend? Good, good. Very good. Yeah. Well, we'll jump right in. Uh, yeah. We've got... Thanks for coming as always. I really appreciate you oh. visiting. So Pleasure's all ours. All right, Shall I'm going to start it? with the military too. We've talked about this at Last Blade Show. Mm -hmm. Could probably do some research and find it in other areas, but let's go through it again. Um, there's always some new information that usually comes out. Um, so the military too. Uh, we started this project uh, back in the mid '90s, so we're looking at about 25 years of evolution. Mm -hmm. Uh, the original military was a, a liner lock, so I'm sure that you could look that up. So you'll notice that right off the bat, you don't get that big cutout. The, line, the military model was known for a generous cutout, so you could easily get to right. the lock if you were wearing gloves. Um, but we went to a compression lock. Uh, the compression lock, as many people know, is a very strong lock. It mm -hmm. puts a piece of metal between that stop pin and blade. Um, it looks very much like a liner lock in reverse, but it's much more than that. Kind of operates the same way, but there's more going on. Much more. Yes. yes. Um, but very safe in the hand, very strong. Um, Finger safe too when yep. closing. I always like that. Um, and people sometimes close it this way, sometimes close it this way, um, depending on what your technique mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the lock is a nice um, evolution to the model. Um, the ergonomics changed on this as well. Uh, at first sight, it may look the same, but when you put them side by side, you start to see those differences. Yeah, we just slimmed a bit. it out a little bit. Much bigger four-finger choil, changed the expansion at the back, um, big big lanyard hole, mm -hmm. four-way clip. Um, our beautiful peel ply uh, G10. Um, we're very proud of that in a lot of ways. New construction, um, so uh, it's got um, larger screws, a little bit different in its build. Still uses a 145 thick blade. Mm -hmm. um, we're launching it in the S30V. A lot of people ask that, why not 45VN or 35VN? Mm -hmm. 45VN, 35VN, great steels. Um, uh, S30V is kind of a mainstay for us. We find that the edge retention is as good, if not better, than a lot of the other grades. Mm -hmm. Plus, we do so much of it um, that we don't find a problem in fabricating. So we are launching it in S30V. It will come in a variety of flavors in the future. Um, we're already talking about our S90V peel ply carbon fiber version. Um, and we have some others coming. Knife Center may already be talking about some exclusives as well. Um, we'll keep the, can't yeah. say anything more than that. Um, but <laughs> I, like, we're not even launching it in serrated in the reveal. But right. naturally, right. you're going to have serrated mm -hmm. all the flavors. So I know, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot now, but I know people are going to be asking: um, Is there is there an estimated? timeline for uh, for this to actually hit the shelves? Um, I, we're looking within the next couple months. They are already processing through the factory. Um, so we, we are ahead of this one, hopefully. Excellent. Now, we haven't been perfect. We're not <laughs> we're not batting a thousand. Some of our reveals, uh, we've been delayed on the projects. Mm -hmm. Even Magna Cut, which has already come up a little bit, has been delayed on some of our projects. But we want to get it right. Yep. But for this one, we are ahead of the game. Because Excellent. we know compression locks, we know militaries. You know S30V. Right, yeah. we can get this one done. One of the really exciting features of this, though, is it's $60 less on the MSRP than the original. The original had different standards, processes, mm -hmm. different ways we made it. After 25 years, we've taken a different approach. Mm -hmm. um, and so you get much more knife at a less cost. And, and uh, we're excited in a day and age of inflation to be, able to, be to, able to do, that. To do yeah. something like that. For and, sure. and so, yeah, For sure. very excited about the military, too. Uh, hopefully it becomes a, another new flagship piece for us. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a winner. Judging by the folks who keep asking about it on our, our comment section, You've definitely got uh, got the buzz and got people excited for it. So, very fun. Excellent. So, where do you want to go next? Uh, How about 15V? Let's do 15V. All right. Uh, we're working with Sean Houston, mm -hmm. uh, also known as the Big Brown Bear. That's mm -hmm. what that uh, logo is on the back. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we've been focused on, focusing on over this last year, is heat treat. Mm -hmm. um, and the 15V is going to highlight that. Uh, with Sean Houston's heat treat on this, we're just able to get more out of the performance than was originally expected, especially when you're looking at some of those data sheets. Mm -hmm. uh, for our edge retention and performance, it's keeping up with some of the super steels, like the Maximet, the K390. Um, it just performs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're really highlighting that across the board, we're looking at all of our heat treats as a CQI, if you will. See what you can do to improve, push it forward a little right. bit. Yeah. You can take S30V or any grade steel and work with you know, 10 different companies and really dive into those and you're gonna get 10 different results. Mm -hmm. 
how they heat treated it, how they ground it, how they sharpened it, what coolants they use, what the thicknesses are, mm -hmm. the approach to it. Yeah. And so through our new, you know, heat treats working with Sean, um, we're getting a lot out of them. And so this is going to highlight it. And these are both going to be like the uh, the Manix that look like this sprint runs, yes? Yes, sprint yes. runs. Uh, we might redo some 15V in the future, but mm -hmm. it would have to be a different color or knife because right. it is a sprint run. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, they they are performers. And then your classic pair of two and your shaman, just, just yeah. great knives. Just out of winners it. all around. Yeah. I should mention while we're talking about these, um, all of this stuff, most of this stuff anyway, you can pre-order right now at the Knife Center except for the sprint runs. We don't do pre-orders on sprint runs anymore because we, we found ourselves getting into a little bit of trouble with that too. So <laughs> Yeah, and they've been kind of popular. I expect yeah. them to yeah. go through. So if you are interested in a 15V model, I, I recommend yeah. jumping in early yeah, I think or you the, might the, end up paying extra. The Manix version of this was gone day one. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, but it, it's worth it. It is a, it's a yeah. pure performance. Excellent. And then uh, Super Steels again, you know, when I think Super Steels is that open wheel sports car, that Lamborghini, if yeah. you will, yeah. uh, and K390s in that same family. You know, with K390, uh, it gets a beautiful patina to it, very hard. Um, it's also very tough. So one mm -hmm. of the things you see in our K390 is serrations. You don't see those in your Maximets and your Because it can G's. actually take it. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. not so brittle, it, it breaks. Mm -hmm. And so we have the Enough 2 coming in K390. Excellent. Uh, the sheath on the K th on this knife, too, I want to point out, like most Spider Coast, that is secure. You're very unlikely to ever mm -hmm. get this out. Uh, it does have a reversible G-clip, um, good thumb push off, but we added a secondary strap if you want to make sure that absolutely mm -hmm. never comes out. It's an option. You can take it off if you needed to, um, but that's what it is there for. And that's just on the K390 version? That's not going to be on the It VG10 is on the VG10 version, version we'll as both. well. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, very secure, um, beautiful handle in its ergonomics and its grip, uh, yeah, that bi-directional It's everything. not just a flat slab on there. There's actually shape going on. I, I appreciate that. And, and for those that really know our history, we made the Enough, which was smaller. Mm -hmm. And at the time we said, it's just enough. You don't need any more. That's why we call it the Enough. Right. Well, this is bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the Enough, too. Uh, so sometimes it wasn't enough. And right. we had to get a little <laughs> bit more. Um, but with the K390 uh, and the VG10 versions, um, if you're just looking for a daily utility user in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. it is a performer. Um, but if you want the extra edge retention, and I can tell you, having used one of the Delicas in K390, it just doesn't stop cutting. It really doesn't. One of my favorites, you know, uh, and it's uh, I love re really using it because you get that patina. Yeah. And with the yeah. blue scale and the patina, it is just a beautiful look it after does. using it. It does, it does, yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, and then along those same lines, uh, this is the Little Temperance. A lot of people might know this because we make it in VG10, but we're also going to make it in that blue in K390. Same color right And that's here, why yeah. I have the black because I didn't have the blue version on me. Right. Um, but it will come in this, this flavor. Uh, just to quickly touch on the Little Temperance, it's three inches long. Uh, it's got a generously thick blade, comes in a compression lock, bi-directional texturing, four-way clip. Uh, got a little divot for your reverse grips. Mm -hmm. If you're going to grip this thing, whether regular or reverse, or you're capping or not, it just gives you all those yeah. options. Um, and one of the things I'm really excited about, too, is we're not uh, raising our prices on our Japanese product. Um, you know, the yen is really, you know, weakened to the dollar in some areas, and, and world currencies over the last couple of years have been fluctuating. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Japanese product going into next year, we're holding pricing. Excellent. And we're going to bring you some of that value, you know. Excellent. Yeah, I, I dig this design. I've never held one of the originals, the because the, this is the two, right? Uh, Little Temperance 3. Oh, it's the 3, yeah. Yeah. So this, this the 3 is my first exposure to yeah. it. And the blade is a little bit thicker than we're used to seeing from, I mean, it's even thicker than a, uh, a Shaman blade there. And just for, if you want that stout, compact, beater knife. The extra toughness on the K390 especially, I think that's going to be really cool. Yeah, and that edge goes all the way back to the guard too. Yeah. And for a lot of Spydercos, they just not get all that edge. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking for a three inch folder, and you want maximum edge, uh, it's pretty tough to beat the little temperance. Yeah, for sure. You can get yeah. right there. And you get all the performance out of that blade length. Too. And with that guard, you feel comfortable. You're not going to slide up on for that sure. edge. For sure. Very nice. Yeah, very fun. Um, Still out of the U.S. Well, this is out of the U.S. facility, and I'm teasing it a little early because it hasn't been revealed. But
but um, it's coming very soon. And Thank this you. is SHOT Show, so I want to show some things. I, we appreciate uh, that. So it's the Micro Jimbo. Mm -hmm. um, for those that know, uh, Michael Janich is a, a you know, a, a prolific designer, uh, artist in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. He's done best defense TV shows. He's written books. He's, mm -hmm. he's just uh, a lot of talent. And so if you are into that self-defense and some of those other you know, realms of the pocket knife, this brings a lot of that at two and a half inches, which is an ideal size for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it has a full flat grind, has that Warren Cliff blade. Uh, this one was sharpened by hand, but you can see even by hand we're incredibly close. It's pr still pretty precise, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's coming off the machines, it should be absolutely perfect. Comes with your compression lock, very lightweight, deep pocket wire clip. You know, fits the hand wonderfully for putting your thumb up here or your finger or whatever type of way you want to grip that thing. Uh, Janich is just, again, just knocks it out of the park with his designs. Yeah, I mean, he's all about that that singular purpose behind the designs of that, of that self-defense aspect for these. And it's cool to see it on a smaller knife, really. And it is tough. With that compression lock built the way we did, um, could probably stick it in a wall and hang. I mean, it, it's a... <laughs> no, no, no. It, 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 it's a beast. Yeah. yeah, I like the full flat grind on it too. Honestly, uh, just I'm a gen in general. That's one of my favorite ways to do a blade too. So I dig that. And for the uh, Yo Jumbo and Yo Jimbo, he went with a hollow grind because you really have that thin tip. Mm -hmm. When you're going to slice you without that. hollow grind, I mean yeah. it's not made for hard cuts. It's made right. for a singular purpose. Right. But when you shrunk it down, going to the full flat, that that tip is still tremendous cutting. So yes, yeah. uh, not a hollow like the others, but it brings it to it. In, in a way, it, it makes it feel, feel, I don't know if the, the numbers agree or disagree, but it makes it feel a little more sturdy in a way. Yeah. And man, if you're looking for an everyday box cutter, you could do a lot worse than this for sure. I mean, designed for a purpose in mind, but can be used for many different things. Of course, of course. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, very and thank, excited. And thank you for the sneak peek as well. Oh, no problem. Uh, and then we do a knife now called the Counter Puppy. Um, in my kitchen, this is probably what I use the most. Um, you know, I know I have some beautiful Murray Carters and mm -hmm. some Z cuts and some of the things that yeah. we do well. Um, but for if you're just gonna, you know, put some knives at the table, get them dirty. Don't worry about what's on the knife it's and such hurting a cool the edge. Thing. Yeah. And then they're low enough cost that you can, you know, for me. I don't recommend it, but I throw in the dishwasher, oh, no. try to keep them clean, um, keep them resharpened, but it's a little bit of a beater. We have that um, on camera now. I know. Uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so yeah, that's a knife that I feel a little bit more comfortable just being harder on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and less, then, less I, I forgot the word. I had a word, it was gone. Yeah, Sorry, well, moving on. Uh, yeah, uh, so we went to the um, counter critter now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's bigger. We are gonna ask for teeth, so this one doesn't have the teeth. I found, because I use them both, that when I'm at the table or setting the table for the family, this is a wonderful piece, mm -hmm. you know, for your for your cutting, for your dinner, um, for, you know, cleaning up afterwards. It's just a nice size. But if you're doing a lot of work in the kitchen or you're looking for something a little bit more robust, mm -hmm. this is going to do it for you. You know, for this, you can, you can work at the cutting board and set it down and go on to another job and come back and you have plenty of length and grip all mm -hmm. the way across. And so expanding the, the puppy to the critter <laughs> you know i just had a thought too I've, I've always appreciated that just being able to keep the edge clean like that i could see fisher fishermen really getting into this too like they've got their cutting board or their tackle box here they could cut and set it exactly the same way yeah like yeah. for meats uh, just so many things yeah. it's so nice to have not everything on the table or even the germs of the table being shared with your knife sure i mean sure. it goes both ways yeah, very cool. Um, and very popular in Japan. It's a Japanese designer, so mm -hmm. it is a collaboration. Um, and more and more in Japan, you're seeing some of these things. Um, and it's just like the Japanese to to turn this stuff uh, to, you know, health and and keeping clean. And a lot of those things are taken to another level in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this just goes right along those yeah. lines well. No, I like it. I like yeah. it very much. I've, had, I've not personally bought one of these, and it was probably because of the size. So I, I like seeing the, uh, the slightly bigger one too, just on a personal level, I dig that. Yeah, so we're excited for it. Comes in teeth, comes in purple as well, but these are the two that we show. Sweet. Uh, and then the last one I was gonna show, uh, we're working with a, a Dutch designer on these. These are our smaller fixed blades. Um, I think they're just about two and a half inches, but I don't, the, the specs in there. Um, what's the say on blade length? 
two point nine five, so just nine. under three. Yeah, and that goes all the way back to the guard, yeah. and which is really how people measure. Yeah, and the, um, the sharpened edge is just over two and a half. Yeah, and and so uh, it is a little bit smaller mm -hmm. in a lot of the world, particularly in Europe. A small fixed blade is becoming popular. Um, a lot of law enforcement doesn't like a knife in your pocket that suddenly appears, or even in your hand that suddenly appears, like a one-hand open clip carry mm -hmm. knife. And gotcha. so if you're looking for a little side carry fixed blade, um, fits a wide variety of hands. We make it in two variations, um, depending on what you know you want to use. If you're looking for a little bit more strength at the tip, mm -hmm. this will probably do it. It's a little bit thicker. That grind line goes right to the tip. Uh, if you're looking for a little bit more slice, this will probably do it for you. Um, fits the hand well. Um, comes in, in the two variations. This is um, by, uh, G10, green, peel ply, screw together, but we added an adhesive on the inside, so okay. if you try to take it apart. Not gonna work out so well not, for you. Yeah, um, we really wanted the handles to be secure, and well, then we did a polish. There's so. no real need, I think, to take it off, because it's so, it's so slim. Like, it, it didn't get bulky with the addition of those. So if, I know a lot of people like to take those off and then do a paracord wrap right. to stay slimmer. It's already nice and slim. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, it could be tough if you are doing that stuff. We wanted the handle to stick around. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, it's store, it's stout. It's a stout little knife. Yeah. Um, and then we have a fold over Boltron sheath that comes with these. Um, always easier to take a Boltron and slap two pieces together and pin it all the way around. Um, but because of the size of the knife, uh, you know, we wanted that slim in the pocket as possible. Has a nice thumb push off, secure grip, rever uh, G clip that can go in a variety of positions. Mm -hmm. um, you'll also notice it's kind of wide at the end with the two um, holes. Some people like to hang them. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you are going to do that, we wanted it to be square so, it's so it not, stays stable. It's not yeah. going to flip on you. Yeah. Um, so the sheath should bring a lot of variety in the way you like to carry your knife. It should probably help it stay upright in the pocket too. I would imagine. Right. Less tippy, so to speak. And and one of the, you know, I love the thumb push-offs for the sense if you're in a restaurant or something, you're not jarring your knife yeah, out. Yeah, for you, sure. You can slowly push it off, draw it, not be too loud and obnoxious. Yeah, um, unless you want to be. Right. <laughs> um, so it is made in China as well. I believe it has an MSRP of around 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, and for a hundred bucks, we think it brings a, a nice value to the market with all the quality features you look for in a, a knife from Spyderco. Yeah, they're cool little designs. I dig them. Mm -hmm. Well, that is it. Yeah, this nice. is, should be all coming out in the next few months if we get our cards right. right. <laughs> we won't hold you to it. We'll, I'll try my very best. We're getting better all the time. Indeed, that's all we, all we can ever do. <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, for sharing this stuff with us. Again, check out uh, the, all of these things can be found at the Knife Center for pre-order, except, again, for the uh, sprint runs and, of course, the sneak peek. That's not going to be up as well. But uh, keep sticking around for more SHOT Show coverage. If you're interested, get your pre-orders in. Eric, thank you so Always much. Always nice seeing you. Appreciate thank you. it very thank much. Thank you so much.